Hello, welcome to a new episode of our show, uh, The View. And uh, today is totally different, and uh, it's different. You know about it, and you don't know about lots of things that we're going to talk about uh, tonight. And we're going to talk about the, the IMC and efforts uh, to revive uh, some uh, crafts and uh, certain project workshops. So the IMC Industrial Modernization Center is holding an international uh, workshop to develop and modernize the Egyptian ethnic products uh, under a specialized program launched by the IMC, which is the Industrial Modernization Center for uh, um, those industries. At uh, the traditional uh, craft center in uh, Fustat, uh, downtown Cairo, um, there is workshop and it aims at producing a range of innovative products with high quality designs suitable for the tastes and standards of the global market. And we find out more from our guests. And we have uh, tonight with us uh, Mrs. Lucia, Car Ms. Lucia Cartini, Deputy Regional Director, UNIDO. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me. <laughs> you honor us here with your presence. And Mr. Adam Najib, Executive Director of the IMC. Hello. Welcome, sir. Thank you. And let's start you with the IMC, you know, because we say IMC, uh, well, uh, the, the Industrial Modernization Center, and lots of people don't know um, the existence of the IMC and the role of the IMC. Well, uh, IMC is, uh, is there to help uh, Egyptian businesses and Egyptian industries in general to uh, become more competitive and uh, more productive and to explore their uh, venues outside of Egypt and uh, in the Egyptian uh, field of uh, markets. Now, uh, it is uh, quite important to point out that IMC is now working with around 15,000 businesses, 15,000 in industries in the country, and we have offered them around 80,000 services so far. So it's a very big uh, operation that we are uh, working with industry on. Uh, industry has managed over the past uh, four years to double its exports from 45 billion Egyptian pounds to 95 billion, and that's non-oil and gas exports, industrial exports. Uh, we are now facing a new challenge where we need to uh, go to markets with an Egyptian identity. Mm -hmm. We need to go to markets with Egyptian products, with added value. We don't just want to go to market with any product. We want to go with a high value product. We want to create jobs that are sustainable. We want to create jobs that are high value jobs, not just any other job. We, d we don't want to go on uh, in a competition with the rest of the world, uh, the developing world, mm -hmm. uh, in a race towards poverty, uh, where we are competing on who has the cheaper labor. Uh, so to give a better quality <coughs> of life to Egyptian mm -hmm. labor and to Egyptian companies and to Egyptian uh, people, uh, we have to uh, engage them in a high value product. Uh, engaging them in a high value product entails that they have to, uh, you, we have to invest in the innovation and in the R&D of that product. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to have a product that represents the Egyptian uh, identity, a product coming out of Egypt. So uh, it was not uh, so far that we had to look. Uh, we started looking into our cultural heritage and discovering elements of our cultural heritage and uh, bringing them out to the surface and uh, engaging them into the industrial scene. Now this is uh, a huge project we are working on. Uh, we call it the DEEP project, the Developing Ethnic Egyptian Products. Mm -hmm. uh, and the slogan that goes with that is digging deep into our cultural heritage. Now, uh, th uh, this, pro this project is uh, a lengthy process where uh, it started by identifying our uh, cultural heritage elements that can be used. And we, uh, we engaged with us uh, academia and uh, uh, NGOs working in this uh, field, uh, the uh, Folk Society for uh, Traditional uh, Arts and Crafts, mm -hmm. uh, helped us in uh, collecting, and they ran a, a study for us, in collecting the uh, Egyptian identity and the Egyptian arts and crafts in all the governorates of uh, Cairo. Uh, 
uh, we took that one step further and we uh, started documenting the uh, Egyptian lifestyle. Yes. And we engaged with the same uh, NGO to uh, document for us the lifestyle uh, that you can identify with the Egyptian way of life. Uh, the Egyptian crafts, the Egyptian traditions in Siwa, in Sina, in Nubia, in the Delta, in, uh, in Fayoum. Mm -hmm. uh, and we brought all of these elements and motifs. Yes. Uh, and there is a huge photo gallery of that uh, uh, coming out in around uh, 750 pictures, where we put all of that together mm -hmm. to, uh, to create a mood or a... a a repertoire where designers can draw upon to uh, design uh, uh, products with uh, taking that in their background. Uh, so the product comes out with an Egyptian identity. It is not just any Egyptian other product. Yes. Identity and yes. soul. Egyptian. And uh, once we have that, uh, this product is unique in the world. Mm -hmm. It cannot. It, it is an Egyptian product, and then. Uh, the next phase we are working on is protecting the intellectual property rights yes. of uh, these crafts, <coughs> arts, traditions, uh, material heritage, mm -hmm. and uh, also the new products that are developed uh, as a result. So this is, uh, in a nutshell, this is what we are doing. Uh, next step is to take uh, these products with the development we are working with them on, uh, to external markets, to uh, taking them to uh, international trade fairs uh, in Italy, in France, in the US, in Canada. In there is a, a, a string of uh, fairs that we will be uh, approaching with these products. Uh, the main thing is to engage uh, these uh, craftsmen and these artisans uh, in an economic module. Uh, we uh, consider that uh, job creation in traditional arts and crafts is one of the cheapest uh, uh, ways to create a job, to create a new job. This is one of the most uh, economic ways to create a job. Yeah, is I was through going to ask you that yes, question. Like is how to, you, what is, how is, is it related is, to yes, sustainable uh, development? Yes. And economic so uh, yeah. creating, uh, uh, I'll give a quick example that uh, really summarizes everything. To create one job in the cement industry, you need uh, to invest around $200,000. To create one job in the textile industry, uh, you need uh, to, to invest around $20,000. To create one job in the traditional uh, arts and crafts uh, industry, in, in embroidery, for example, uh, you need to invest in one needle. Mm -hmm. Just one needle. You give uh, a young... Uh, lady a needle and she can start uh, working so you create a job very cheaply now it is not uh, uh, as important as creating that job is to create a sustainable job to create a sustainable job you need a market that will demand that uh, product that is coming out of that job so uh, you have to produce something the market needs and this is where the importance of this workshop uh, comes into place and uh, where the interaction with UNIDO came into uh, focus. But you know, how did the uh, idea originate to, to start with? You know, like just doing all that. And how it, did it come it, up? It, it, we were in search for an economic model, a sustainable development model, an economic model that uh, that we can do, uh, a product that we can produce. We have to produce a product uh, that is. Egyptian that can that we can document and uh, and obtain the intellectual property rights for it. Uh, we can all identify a product that is done in the Chinese manner, in the Mexican manner, yes. in the French style, in the uh, Italian style, uh, Scandinavian style. Uh, we need to associate a product with the Egyptian production, but with the Egyptian you, heritage. What you're talking about, you know, we had, you know, some crafts and, you know, some products, for example, of Khan Khalidi products, you know, and, and we know these things, you know, and then suddenly we see other markets uh, producing that, and then they say, 